And that's why I realized that bees and refugees could work together to support each other. My name is Ali. Um, I come from Damascus. And my profession right now is a full-time beekeeper. <laughs> I spent my childhood in, uh, in Damascus, in Syria. Uh, my parents were um, knitwear manufacturers, so we used to sell knitwear to different uh, areas. Like we had stores in Syria, we had stores in the GCC region, and we had one store in London. Uh, that was before the Syrian revolution in 2011. So we were we were for a year uh, working with doing humanitarian uh, humanitarian campaigns to support uh, areas blocked by the army. So the army was besieging cities and not letting food or medicine go through. So we were doing our part to help, and the government found out and ended up burning down our factory and where our houses became like a conflict zone and we also had to leave. So we ended up leaving Syria in January 2013. I was in the UK and I applied for asylum. I came straight to work in the luxury fashion industry. So I was working in Harrods and that's where the shock happened because I, I was looking at two opposite worlds. I was going to refugee camps in, in, in Greece and of course I had the background of everything that happened in Syria and that's still happening. Then next day I go back to work in Harrods where I deal with customers. They're like aliens. I think I, like, I got really depressed, especially after seeing these opposite words. And that was only in 2014 and I stopped after that because I think I was, I went through like really de depressed. I was depressed for like a couple of years. <laughs> Basically, that's literally how bees and refugees came to be. Like, I realized that working in my garden is actually helping me a lot uh, with my mental health. I realized that working with the bees is helping me a lot. And I felt that both bees and refugees are under attack. Uh, and that's why I realized that bees and refugees could work together to support each other. My vision for bees and refugees was to crowdfund enough amount to place uh, around 50 beehives across different locations in London and so it's easy for the refugees to reach one of the hives depends on depends on like where they live we wanted to crowdfund 38,000 to do the whole project uh, because of covid we ended up uh, downscaling to 11,000 and that was enough to to purchase just the beehives and the bees uh, so we're currently a bit short on budget for uh, for the workshops, which is also like which is like the main goal of our initiative. Uh, that's why we're still crowdfunding on on GoFundMe. We're still like trying to get a bit, a bit more support to organize these workshops as soon as the social distancing is over. We're also offering beekeeping workshops to schools. So there are schools that cannot afford to pay for workshops. We're offering that wor those workshops for free in exchange of uh, them hosting our beehives. Uh, and there are other schools where they have budgets to actually support an orga organization like Bees and Refugees in exchange of uh, placing a beehive and educating students on the importance of pollinators. My, my goal for this, I mean, I, I, what I really want to happen is hopefully in the next two years, we're gonna be able to take this project and uh, do the same in where there are refugee camps or where there are concentration of like people stuck and living in tents. If I'm this depressed and I'm here, how, how what's happening to those who have been stuck in tents for like three or four years without access to anything? So these people need support the most. And I want, I need to take this project there. So we're, there are refugee camps in Jordan, Turkey, Greece, Lebanon, all these areas are like, they're like desperate to projects like this where like people work on mental health.